originally the uh, story behind PBL uh, is one that has taken several years uh, in the making. Uh, it began in uh, 2008 9 uh, when Reagan uh, doubled the size of our enrollment from 375 students to uh, close to uh, 800 students. Uh, within that class um, of 425 to 50 plus freshmen, uh, close to 300 students weren't proficient uh, in reading and math. The vision of personalized blended learning was to uh, have students uh, that were quote unquote at risk uh, or need some kind of support um, and provide them a uh, safety net within our school, a place where they could go um, and also where we would be focusing on what they needed uh, to be college and career ready uh, and doing this by leveraging technology. We started with some challenges to begin with. Uh, now currently, uh, one of the was creating a staff around personalized blended learning. Uh, when we started PBL three years ago, uh, we had basically one teacher and two support teachers. Uh, so we had three uh, teachers focusing on math and literacy support. Uh, today, it is the largest department in our school with 22 teachers in some form or fashion touching uh, the personalized blended learning. And next year, uh, in the future, we'll be over 25 teachers. Um, long story short, you might ask yourself, what is personalized blended learning? At our school, it, there are four main components that we focus on. Uh, and again, the vision is to prepare all of our students for college and career readiness. The four components are credit recovery. So if a student uh, fails a course, they're automatically in personalized blended learning uh, lab and, uh, and are used E2020 for their online software that they use to recover the credit. Uh, we use our data from the MAP as well as the ACT uh, to target students that are not proficient in math and literacy. So that is the second one. So first is credit recovery. Second is uh, math slash literacy proficiency. Uh, third is attendance. We, any student that has less than 85 attendance, percent attendance is automatically in uh, the lab uh, and receiving support because of the strong correlation between a lack of being in school and success either in their credit or with proficiency. And then the last part is uh, social emotional support slash college and career readiness support. And essentially what those are are programs that we use to on online technology uh, to provide students success uh, for either college and career readiness or any social emotional support that they might uh, need. Hello, uh, my name is Joe Paltzer and I'm the Personalized Blended Learning Coordinator for Ronald Reagan High School. Um, in our lab here, we have the opportunity to kind of develop a pathway for students to learn that's a little outside of the traditional environment, taking in students' interest, voice, and choice uh, to their actual learning uh, and kind of capitalizing on that. In uh, PBL, students are geared towards proficiency. And we do that in a variety of ways. Uh, the biggest way that we actually end up doing that is through an online portfolio using a system called Pathbrite. Uh, on Pathbrite, students can upload various documents and assessments to show their growth over the course of a year. So it's not simply a one-stop assessment, but a catalog of growth uh, over a whole year. Uh, we set certain benchmarks and artifacts for students to kind of achieve in here. Um, so in our JOC, as we're calling it, or justification of credit, students are able to catalog and go through our various artifacts that we have um, and upload them to show their growth in a, a way that's not just a single test score. Um, well, I think the going to the PBL lab is like a great advantage to me personally, even though I'm here for because my my map scores were lower than people, so I, I definitely want to take this as an advantage because obviously I get I get extra help for this, and which I need, and then also it's because they help me work on anything like so it help me like, work on, work with my future, just as like how my portfolio how it's helping me like go build myself towards getting a job when I'm older. They help me look for colleges, help me, like. You know, 
of employers have came in here. People have kind of came to talk to me, and it's just a good way to get my name out and how I can get my name out towards future employers of myself. All right, I'm Marissa Volkening, and I'm a PBL teacher. Um, I'm also a special education teacher here, so um, my role in the lab is really supporting the special education students and kind of coordinating those services for students that are in here. So we have a variety of students that um, are programmed to the lab, and I help um, provide the specialized instruction to students for math and reading. How are we? I feel like it's been a long time since I've had this yeah. group. You guys are always with Mr. Colton. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to take a little break from Think Circa, and instead we're going to read an essay that's actually really personal to me, and I'll tell you guys why at the end of today. But the essay, as you can see, is called Welcome to College. And in it, the author uses an analogy to explain something. So. Before we do that, actually read the essay, I'm going to show you a video because after she wrote this, they created obviously lots of YouTube videos, but there's one that's really cool. It uses a lot of pictures and music to kind of show the meaning of this. So I'm going to show you that first and then we'll jump into the essay. The, the plan for the PBL in the next few years is to uh, integrate uh, supports for ninth and 10th graders so that we're able to maximize uh, the, the achievement uh, for the students that we have. We realize that we, while we have um, improved proficiency in reading and math for 11th and 12th graders, they only sometimes receive about a year's worth of benefit while at Reagan. So our, our goal is to uh, work with the teachers in the 9th and 10th grade classes to ensure that students are not only receiving um, skill support in, in gaps that they need in, in areas of learning, but also that they're going to um, receive support with the classes that they're currently uh, taking. While proficiency uh, rates and, and improvement is, it looks great on data. What really makes the student want to come to school is the fact that they feel safe and they understand that what they're doing now has a payoff in the future. This needs to give you guys a quick rundown on what to expect this crunch time. So we're down to like the last four or five weeks. So I just want to make sure everybody is clear what you need to do to make sure that you're not here for summer academy or not using a time on your schedule next year for credit recovery or if you're a senior to make sure that you're not having any issues with graduation. All right, so everybody, who's here is a senior? Who am I seeing here right now? So seniors, you guys have a shorter amount of time than everybody else. Everybody else here has pretty much up until the last day to change their courses. But Mr. Wiki gave me a message saying that I need to put the senior grades in a little earlier. So everybody else has about five weeks. Seniors, you're down to like three and a half. Hey, my name is Jason Brazil. I'm a special education teacher here at Ronald Reagan High School. Um, I'm also our credit recovery coordinator. Um, I see students almost every block of the day here. Um, most of the time students come in here because they've had a little speed bump in their road to success. So, um, you know, either they did not pass a class, um, they're out because of situations that were, you know, beyond what they could control. Um, we even have some students that are here because of um, health issues. They couldn't participate in their gym class. Um, and some students that are kind of coming back into the school scene, looking to kind of repair some of the issues that they had earlier and get back on track for a timely graduation. So here when we're working with our credit recovery students, one of the most important things for success is making sure that we um, build great relationships and rapport with our students. Um, a lot of these students have already been through situations where they feel like they may have failed or don't have um, somebody good on their side to help them succeed or bounce back. And if you can be that person where a student can open up to, um, they trust your constructive criticism, they trust that you're somebody that's really there for them and trying to help them graduate, they're really more likely to give you a lot more of themselves as far as the work that they put in. About like when I was a freshman, I missed a lot of days and uh, I would miss like most of the year and I was behind in grades and credits and all that. So uh, Ms. Jalicki gave me um, a chance to get all my credits back and he let me do credit recovery. So he gave me a couple classes on it and uh, I started, he gave me like three classes, history, math, and uh, science. 
I finished science, uh, I finished history, um, and uh, he gave me another class to, to speed up on that, and uh, with, without the credit recovery, I probably would have uh, two more years in school, two more, so it's allowed me to, like, um, graduate quicker than I would thought. I would, wouldn't have graduated, you know, if this wasn't. So. so we created two interventions. One is called our literacy workshop, and the other is called our math workshop. And what literacy workshop does is we took those students and we give them a 30-minute, very intensive, skill-based lesson aligned to one of the ACT standards. And as a result of that, we're hoping to see some great gains come with our next um, standardized test, which will be in a couple of weeks. Uh, our plan is to identify ninth and 10th grade students um, either via attendance, uh, proficiency scores, uh, behavior referrals, or, or possible other uh, medical or emotional indicators to identify ways to basically make them feel more comfortable in the school setting uh, and, and use that information to support them in ninth and 10th grade so that they get off to a more solid start. The future of PBL in the high school is a broad and um, very wide open um, scenario for, for schools. Um, essentially what uh, it looks like for our school is when we started three years ago with an action plan for PBL, uh, again we had basically three <coughs> teachers uh, and now that's proliferated to 22 and 25 teachers. Uh, but student-wise it only hit about 200 students. Uh, next year, uh, this year we've moved that up to close to 450 students where we've taken tier two students from math and literacy and provided them support through our PBL lab and, and intervention work with those students. Mm -hmm. Next year, we're going completely school-wide. We have 1,300 students. All students will be in PBL in some fashion and form, receiving the four components of uh, support that we can offer. And uh, again, the will be to prepare uh, all students in our school for college and 